real power in the kingdom and is the driving force behind Saudi Arabia's efforts to modernize. The House of Saud, whose members are thought to be worth well over $2 trillion, is represented publicly by the 35-year-old. It is a staggering amount that's almost 16 times more than the British royal family. The wealth was made possible by the massive oil deposits that King Abdul Aziz ibn Saud of Saudi Arabia discovered more than 75 years ago. Although the family prefers to keep their money a secret, Prince Salman is thought to lead a life of almost unfathomable luxury as a result of his wealth. He's renowned for his extravagant spending on opulent homes and is even said to be the owner of the most expensive picture in the world. He was allegedly a part of the costly, unsuccessful purchase of Newcastle United. The Globe was shocked when an unidentified buyer spent over $300 million for an amazing chateau in France just west of Paris when the Chateau Louis XIV sold for that unbelievable amount of money in 2015 after missing out on Manchester United and both English Premier League teams. However, despite all the elaborate details, one fact was absent. It was dubbed the most costly house in the world by Time magazine, and people from all over the world flocked to admire its gold-leafed fountain, marble statue, and walled labyrinth. Set in a 57-acre landscape park, it eventually emerged that the paper trail pointed to Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who is the impetus behind a number of audacious policies that are reshaping Saudi Arabia in the Middle East. Through interviews and records, the tale of Chateau Louis XIV is cobbled together. It reads like a financial mystery between a lawyer from the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg and a fixer for the extremely wealthy from the Mediterranean country of Malta. Even Kim Kardashian made an appearance at the chateau. She's rumored to be considering it for her and Kanye West's nuptials. By using front business in France and Luxembourg, the ownership of the chateau in Louvre, France, close to Versailles, is meticulously concealed. Eight investment firms, including one Saudi company run by the head of Crown Prince Mohammed's private foundation, own those businesses. According to advisors to members of the royal family, the chateau and other usual extras for luxury homes, including a wine cellar and a theater, belong to the Crown Prince in the end. The rotunda's ceiling is covered in a beautiful fresco, and the moat has a translucent underwater chamber with a sturgeon and koi swimming above it. The grounds are guarded by a Carrara marble statue of Louis XIV. The house has 10 bedrooms, an aquarium, a library, and an indoor and outdoor pool. The aquarium serves as a meditation space and has an underwater chamber that seems like it belongs in a James Bond movie. In addition to these properties, the prince is well known for owning the La Rouve Estate, a 620-acre property located several hours from Paris. The CIA later determined that journalist Jamal Khashoggi was skilled on the Crown Prince's orders has made the prince a contentious figure in world politics. This was especially true in the fall of 2018 when the prince was the target of a widespread international outcry over the death of Khashoggi. According to reports, the king bought a superyacht from a Russian Baka businessman, Yuri Scheffler, in 2015 for close to $500 million. The king reportedly paid the Russian Baka businessman, Yuri Scheffler, almost $500 million for a superboat in 2015. The Serene, which has an overall length of 439 feet, a beam that is 60 feet wide, a salt water pool, a huge hot tub, a sauna next to the water, and a fully functional helipad is one of the largest boats in the world. When Serene was delivered, the yachting community recognized her as one of the most inspirational super yachts ever built. At the time of her delivery, Serene was the ninth largest yacht in the world, just surpassing the 133-meter Al Maqab of the Emir of Qatar and falling short of the 138-meter Larsen Rising Sun of David Geffen. However, having previously primarily concentrated on commercial ships, Serene was the first yacht ever built by the government-controlled Italian shipyard Vincentieri. Serene attracts attention wherever she travels, not only because of her enormous size, but also because of a number of interior improvements and the exterior lines that Espino Eno drew for her. The ship has six floors and a beam of 18.5 meters. It has a wide range of amenities that are uncommon in five-star hotels. Her enormous bathtub is one of her most striking exterior features. One of the ship's seven pools, the sun deck, has a jacuzzi attached to it. On the top deck, there's a sunbathing area all around the jacuzzi. A fully stocked wet bar is located beneath the yacht's observation deck, forward of the hot tub, and has a second set of sun loungers. The prince apparently continued his spending spree by purchasing the most expensive painting ever. The discovery that Saudi Arabia's crown prince had purchased a Leonardo da Vinci artwork for $450 million shocked the Western world. But to those who have watched him, it was simply the latest in a string of astounding acquisitions. Leonardo da Vinci's Saboteur Mundi, which sold at Christie's in 2017 for over half a billion dollars, 
the largest sum ever paid for a work of art had a mysterious bidder named Prince Muhammad. Having fun watching the video? Then pause and go like, share and subscribe. The typical news of a wealthy and influential member of the Saudi Arabian royal family purchasing art would not attract attention, but the timing of this acquisition was noteworthy. Just two weeks prior, Crown Prince Mohammed had rounded up more than 200 Saudi princes, ministers, and businessmen as part of an anti-corruption effort. The majority are being held at a posh hotel in Riyadh, the capital. And if that weren't enough, the prince is also developing Nyon, a massive megacity along the Red Sea that'll cost $500 billion. The new construction will be 17 times the size of London and run entirely on renewable energy. It will develop into a transnational city-state with a separate economic region and laxer regulations than the rest of Saudi Arabia. Salman aspires for his city to become the world's entertainment capital and to outpace Silicon Valley in terms of technology, sci-fi asks. The ideas incorporate concepts such as flying taxis, cloud seeding to make it rain, and a huge man-made moon to illuminate neon at night. Robotic housekeepers will be available, and scientists will be working in the city to generate genetic alterations that would improve people. 2015 will bring beaches with a glow-in-the-dark sand, and a Jurassic Park-inspired robot dinosaur theme park is planned to open. Nobody does partying better than our guy when it comes to having a good time. According to records, he had one of the biggest parties ever on Earth in 2015. A private island in Maldives received 150 gorgeous ladies who had been brought in from Brazil, Russia, and other countries to party with only a few dozen guys from the Middle East. It was a valet facility. One of the most opulent and pricey vacation spots in the entire globe was planned for a private island in the Maldives. There were about 40 private villas on the island, several of which were perched above the Indian Ocean's azure seas. Each of the suites has its own butler and a private veranda with a pool. Even a snow machine was present, allowing guests to play in a man-made snowfall on the warm beach. Mohammed bin Salman and his crew also had the island to themselves since he had rented out the entire property. A staggering $50 million was spent on it. There were more than 300 employees working at each resort. They would additionally receive a $5,000 bonus on top of the already large cash tip. To maintain confidentiality, those same employees typically make just $1,000 to $1,200 per month. The staff members were only permitted to bring a candy bar-shaped Nokia 3310 for communication purposes. They were not permitted to bring smartphones to the island. Two employees were let go for flouting the entertainment regulations. Pitbull and other well-known performers from all over the world were hired by Salman. Shakira and Jennifer Lopez were also expected to perform and discuss the power of money along with a collaboration between the Korean music Psy and DJ Afrojack. Because of his youth, the prince's influence and extravagant spending are likely to be felt for a very long time. He's now de facto the ruler of Saudi Arabia and was the driving force behind many recent reforms, including the 27 edict permitting women to drive. What would you do if you had this guy's level of wealth? Let's know. That's the end of this video. Do you want to know how the Omani royal king spends his money? Then click on the video that appears on the screen. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. See you.